You may remember in the early months of Russia's war on Ukraine, seeing yachts, mansions, private jets, and other valuable assets belonging to Russian oligarchs being seized by the United States and other countries. The question was, what do you do with all those billionaire toys? Well, included in Congress's $1.7 trillion omnibus spending package is an amendment to allow for those assets to be sold and for the proceeds to be given to Ukraine. It will be a godsend to the long-suffering people of the Ukraine. It will be a relief to the American taxpayer because billions of dollars are subject to being seized and transferred. It will be a bad day for oligarchs. Yachts seized at the request of the United States include the $90 million 255-foot tango, which could be a tender next to the $300 million 348-foot vessel, the Amadea. French authorities seized Roman Abramovich's $120 million Riviera mansion. The Treasury Department has blocked or frozen more than $30 billion in sanctioned Russian assets. A September report from the World Bank and Ukrainian government found that Russia's invasion caused more than $97 billion in direct damages to Ukraine through June 1st, and it could cost $350 billion to rebuild the country. But the cost has certainly increased since the latest reports. Congress also passed the Justice for Victims of War Crimes Act Thursday, which will allow the Justice Department to prosecute war criminals found in the United States, even if the crime wasn't committed in America. We know from our experience with Nazi war criminals that some offenders will escape immediate prosecution. They may assume false names. They may flee to other countries. Some may even successfully make it to our country. Before the Justice for Victims Act was passed, members of Congress said war criminals could have found safe haven in the United States because there was no U.S. statute for crimes against humanity. Straight from D.C., I'm Ray Bogan.